Well, hello and welcome to Bowtie Life. Uh, it's a little different out here, but before, before we get to that, I need your help. Um, those of you who have already subscribed, skip forward about 12 to 15 seconds. Those of you who have not subscribed, we're trying to grow the community and I really would appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel as we grow our network. So now back to all this, it is time for November garden tours. Yeah, and it's raining. Let me tell you why that's so exciting. Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. So the thing is, we have not gotten a lot of rain in quite a while. Uh, so this morning as I'm sitting here trying to debate, should I go do the garden tours in the rain? I was thinking, yeah, you know what? I really should because this is such a, has been such a rarity for us. <laughs> so uh, it has been right at a month since we've had any rain. I don't mean any measurable rain, I mean any rain. It's been sunny and clear and beautiful for a whole month, every single day. Now before that, a month ago, and today is November 11th, a month ago before that, we only had a rain another month before that. So in two months, we've had a significant rain twice. That's it. Now the previous month, um, we did have measurable. But if you go back another month and another month, all the way back to July, it has been a rain once a month. Now, and but the further back we get, back in July, there's actually measurable stuff. Uh, one, a couple of days in there, and I'm looking at the Destin Executive Airport records, which is actually not very far from us. It's one of the four airports. Uh, I'm sorry, one of the two airports that we live near. We also live near four air bases, so <laughs> we get a lot of uh, air traffic and a heliport. But uh, anyway, this is just exciting. I thought, you know what? I'm gonna at least get started out here in this. I got my raincoat on, I got my garden hat on, and uh, yeah, we're gonna see if we can get going with a garden tour. Uh, it got a little harder now just as I was talking, but can you see that plant right there? You might know two weeks ago, it was blooming. It dropped all the blooms and it's already blooming again. We'll get to that in a few minutes. So I'm going to, I think wait a few minutes until this rain dies down. We got a little cluster of rain coming. The Gulf of Mexico is uh, literally seven, seven blocks that way. And it, this is coming off the water and it's supposed to only last an hour or so. And I think after that, I might wait till this slows down a bit and we will start the garden tour in the usual spot. Now, as you all, all know, if you've watched any of my garden tours, we have this uh, property map right here of the property. It's an aerial view. This one's off of Google Maps. I am so hoping. I've got a fellow lined up next month that we're gonna get some aerial uh, videography done that we can use and photography done we can use for this map. Uh, but I've used this map so you can get an idea of where we are in the, the property as we're going through this garden tour. And uh, you can see here, it's a small property, but we try to do a lot with it. It's 100 feet wide, 106 feet deep, that's it. And I'm trying to use every bit I can. I, you'll notice uh, we've got some vertical space gardening. In fact, you can see there's an archway right there that has stuff on it that's producing here in November 11th, uh, which is kind of cool if you ask me. But um, anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, this property thing right here, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be here in the lower uh, left corner of the screen. And uh, this red circle will show you about where the camera is looking as we're going around here. And you'll see it move around the property as I, as the camera moves around the property. And here uh, right now, we're about to head over to the strawberry patch, which is where we start. Now, let me just mention here, this is really my own journal of what's going on in the garden. Uh, this is my, I look back at this frequently and um, uh, get an idea of what's happened month to month. I try to remember when something happened. Uh, this is my journal. 
and I've, I've tried writing in a journal, I've tried photography, I've tried a few other things. It's just not worked well for my ADD brain. And so these videos are actually my journal. So I start in the same exact order every single month. Uh, so if you ever want to see something and you know where it is in the yard, hence the map in the corner, if you know where it is in the yard, you can actually fast forward to the point where it is. Or you can look in the index, uh, which is down in the description for this video. You'll see there's a whole bunch of timestamps uh, that show, ooh, something nasty's dripping off my hat here. Brown stuff, ew, this hat needs to be washed, I think. It's probably sweat. Anyway, <laughs> there is a fully descriptive index in the description. You can click on timestamps and go specifically to a particular item if you're looking for something. Otherwise, you can just watch the video, uh, which I appreciate that very much. But uh, anyway, so yeah, here we go. Let's get started over here in the strawberry patch. Uh, you can see the endless um, pile of wood chips is still here. Hasn't changed. It's going to change. I'm hoping before the December, but uh, I'm not sure. It's gonna depend on the weather. Uh, if the strawberries, if the weather starts turning really cold in time, uh, it, basically I'm waiting for the weather to get cold and these what is left of the strawberries here to go fully dormant before I start transplanting things because I'm going to be reorganizing this whole strawberry patch. So here we go. So yeah, looking at the strawberries, uh, there are actually a number of strawberry plants in here. And they're, some of them are kind of buried. Uh, in fact, I just saw one where... Okay, so they, yeah, there's one right there. That's an Ozark Beauty. The ones in this back half here are Ozark Beauty. The ones in the front half are Walmart Seed Strawberries. And those are strawberries that came from Walmart Seed. You can see there's a whole cluster of them right in here. Uh, and there's occasional ones in here that will be transplanted. Right, look at there. Look at it there. No, that's not a strawberry. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, we lost a whole bunch of them because I let this area get way overgrown by grass. I cleared it out. See, there's another one there. There's another one there. Now, the nice thing about these strawberries is they will reproduce and repopulate quickly. In fact, there is a whole horde of them. In fact, that right there is probably enough to be do what I want to do with the new organized bed. So that right there, that that region of Walmart seed strawberries is probably going to be enough. And see, uh, this is the thing we're fighting here. Look, here's trees growing up right in the middle of these things. I say fighting. It's not a fight. Well, that one is. Oh, my goodness. But, wow, look at that taproot. These things we I try to pull out and keep up. In fact, I did do some weeding here. I'll show you in, in the artichoke patch in a few minutes. But, uh, Anyway, all these Ozark beauties, you can see there's a whole bunch of them all through here and even more th all messed in through here. I can even see a couple underneath uh, those uh, leaf flower popping up right there. But uh, anyway, so the strawberries, we still have plans. Like I just said, um, when the weather turns better for this, in other words, colder, uh, I will be working on this bed and that pile will be disappearing. Uh, you look at this um, basil. I just let this thing go because the bees have been all over the flowers. It's going to start creating seed. Yes, it's going to seed itself. But it won't matter because all this is getting covered over anyway, except for where I want something to grow. So let's see. Takes us over. Oh, okay. So let's do, look at the jalapeno plants in the middle. Uh, I have not harvested from these in a while. And you can see there are some green ones in here. Uh, that are looking pretty good, actually. They're going to start gr keep growing. And as usual, when the first few turn red, then I will harvest them. But look at this. This guy is just starting to turn red. We still have a beautiful bud right there. So, yeah, jalapenos are doing good. The uh, chocolate mint that has lived right there for two years now, it is thriving. It does need to get some clean out done. Basically, all this brown stuff will we'll pull out and make room for new growth coming up next year. So uh, I'll take care of that eventually. The pomegranates. Uh, dead pomegranate, dead pomegranate, living pomegranate. Uh, I don't know if these will survive. I'm gonna, I have a whole bunch to replace these with. I did like how this little cluster down here 
survived. And I think this survived because this tree here was blocking it from the hotter afternoon sun during the summer. And I feel really good about that. So I may, these don't grow real thick. I may just go ahead and keep something over there. Uh, one of the things that I might be keeping over there is this plumeria, but I, this plumeria is not that tough is the problem. So it needs to be in a place where it can be protected when it's in the cold winter. Uh, I like how Millennial Gardener protects his uh, citrus trees when they are uh, in the cold, and I may have to do something with that, uh, which means I might have to put it over here uh, in front of the power boxes on our house. The rosemary down here, I have done absolutely nothing with. You can see uh, there's stuff growing up down here. Uh, is that a strawberry plant? I think there's a strawberry plant right there next to it. That's cool. Oh man, the aroma right now. You touch those that thing and the aroma is just overwhelming. Ooh, that's beautiful. Rosemary, I've got several rosemary plants growing in our property now, which is very exciting. The fig tree, this is a brown turkey fig tree that we actually ate a brown turkey fig off of. You can see the leaves are starting to turn. Uh, not quite. Let's see, one of these leaves I was hoping would just fall off. Nope, not quite. I just, oh, there you see that? I just barely touched it and it just fell off. So I don't know this, but I think the fact that it won't just let go means this thing is still adding value to the plant. Now these all have fig rust on them. Uh, that's what the spots are. This is the natural end of season for a fig tree for us. We have a lot of fig rust around here and it just, when it's dropping its leaves like it normally does, it uh, just gets that rust color on it, the spots on it, and it just drops its leaves. So the rest of the nut house over here, we have some uh, two-year-old uh, mums. These actually did pretty good, and you can actually see why, I think, because on rare occasion, it gets watered from the roof. This one over here has not fared as well, and I think, look, it's just barely missing it. I don't think this quite got the rain that it needed. Remember, we haven't had much rain in the past uh, few months, so without uh, the rain, this thing doesn't have any irrigation, so it doesn't get anything. I think that may have been the problem with it. So, uh, just a brief look. Be sure to catch our small space garden. We'll see what those orange tags are for. And we come around here past the uh, fall paraphernalia. And, the, oh, yep, there's Christmas. I know, not even Thanksgiving yet. One of my neighbors had his up before Halloween, and I took the signal. Okay, we're down here to the asparagus patch. Not asparagus. Artichoke patch. Yeah, that's what it is. And you'll notice, look how much cleaner it is. But before we look at that, uh, we have our Perkins fig here. It's called a Perkins fig because of the last name of the, per oh, did you see that? That just barely came off. I barely touched it and it came off. So I've just been coming over here and touching these leaves just to see if they're ready to fall off. Uh, it is fall. We're well into fall. Things are losing their leaves. This is normal. So. Uh, this fig tree will lose all of its leaves. It's still, it's all trimmed up. It doesn't need much care because I've been taking care of it. It has a nice goblet shape that I want to maintain. It's uh, probably about four and a half to five feet tall, which I'm very happy with. And you can actually see there are a couple of figs. You can see there's one right there. And there's one down there, right there. And if you look over here, there's like, one, two, three, four of them. These probably are five, six of them. These probably will not be, make it to eating, eatability because we're so late in the season. A lot of times they just fall off because there's not enough energy going into that plant to fully develop those figs. That's normal for this time of year. So looking down here at the artichoke patch, in fact, we're gonna do something special here. Looking down at the artichoke patch, we have some amaryllis. You haven't seen those in a while because this thing was covered in grass. Remember the grass was all the way up inside the, the, the windmill right here? Well, got most of it cleared. Got a lot of it cleared, very excited. You can actually see the yarrow down here, but the bell pepper, you'll notice that I did irrigate this eventually. Uh, this did get irrigated, so this, this thing hopefully will be happier. Of course, it's getting rain today, it won't matter. But the yarrow, there's so many little, um, 
stalks in here. I think I'm supposed to trim these. Uh, I think <laughs> it's also putting out pups. In fact, let me lift this. I haven't looked at this yet, but I'm going to suspect that there are other things. I don't see any. Okay. Well, somewhere there are, oh yeah, here we go. There are little pups coming up on this. No, I don't see anything. Maybe right there. I can't tell. No, nope, that's just discarded leaves. Okay, well, that's the yarrow. I'm excited it's looking so good. Uh, coming around, yes, this is the artichoke patch because this is primarily what's in here. Uh, you'll notice there's a nice looking artichoke plant right there. This is a green globe artichoke. That right there, that little sprig with a big root ball is a green globe artichoke. And I have a feeling it's going to start thriving with this weather change. And this is a green globe artichoke. These are perennials, which means they grow year after year. They produce artichokes. The thing you get artichoke hearts from. Yeah, artichokes. So <laughs> I'm hoping these will take off. Now, the, the mistake I made here is I planted these in the spring, thinking, oh, plant things in the spring because I'm an idiot. Okay, yes, I know. I didn't know what I was doing. So I planted these in the spring, not knowing any better, and they kind of struggled all summer. All three of these just kind of struggled all summer. Then I finally figured out, thanks to Kevin over at uh, Epic Gardening, he planted his in the fall. And now he's in San Diego, I'm in Destin, Florida. He planted his in the fall. He says, if you're living in a place like this, you need to plant it in the fall so it can kind of get its roots over the winter. By springtime, it's ready to explode. So we used to have one here. We used to have one over here. And so what I need to do is I need to put some more artichokes here and here. And look at the space up here. Might be room for maybe one there and one in the back there by the, uh, by the windmill behind those sunflowers. So how about we do that? So it just so happens among our seed starts for the fall, we have, and here they are. Look at the green globe artichokes now. They look, I think, beautiful. And just taking a chance here, I'm gonna lift this one out over here. And let's see if the roots are coming out of the, oh, look at there. That thing is begging to get out. Looky there, I'm excited about that. All right, so we will be trying to get that to focus a little. There it is. Uh, we are going to plant some of these out. In fact, I'm gonna plant, I think, uh, at three or four of them out. Let's see what we can get together here. So you can see here, I've placed three of the four artichokes. And this is, by the way, a Green Globe Improved Artichoke from Botanical Interests. I wanted to get the exact same one that Kevin had over at <laughs> Epic Gardening. But anyway, uh, you can see I've placed, and here I am on the right, putting this first one in. I'm, there's actually a surprising amount of roots in here when I start digging here in just a second. And... Um, something is developing roots through here. I'm not sure what it is, but it's these really woody roots. That's the previous tag for Green Globe Artichoke, for the one that was here. Uh, anyway, so something is growing these roots, and you'll see me pulling them out here in a moment. Here we go. Look at that big old root pulling out. Uh, I'm really not sure what this is. Look at this. Huge, huge root. That one almost got the best of me. But yeah, so uh, I did clear out as many roots as I could in here. I'm digging down and as far as I need to for this solo cup, and you can see me testing it there. It's about right. I dug a little bit more just to make sure. But check out the roots on this plant. Now, <laughs> they didn't get wet, but these roots are just begging to get into the ground. And of course, the first thing that's gonna need to be done here is these plants are not need to gonna get watered in. Well, <laughs> it's raining, so <laughs> they're gonna get watered in just fine. But uh, yeah, so uh, it, easy as that. Don't don't overcomplicate this. This, this is very simple. Uh, the kneeling bench there that is a gardening kneeling bench. It actually can work this way, so you can put your knees on it, and you can flip it over to sit on. Uh, now. You'll see on the other side, there's actually some pouches where I have my tools. You have to flip those around. So most of the time it just stays like this for me, but keeps my pants clean. Plus it doesn't hurt my knees because my knees tend to hurt. Um, so yeah, now that those white uh, roots, of course, are the 
dollar weed that I, we have growing prolifically around here. There wasn't nearly as many roots. There was, there was a couple of roots here that I pulled out. Not like that first one though, but uh, just, you know, be careful as you're going in here, just testing it uh, for depth. Oh, this one here just it falls apart. I really messed that one up. I, I couldn't get the rest of the root ball out and I had to pop it one here. Just, hit, look at that. So there's a lot of roots in there ready to go. And I, and I, I have no doubt that I stressed this plant out a whole lot. Uh, we'll just have to see what takes. I put, I've got four here. In fact, you can barely see in the bottom center of the screen, the leaf of the fourth one that uh, I won't be recording here. But uh, anyway, I'm stressing these plants. Any transplant, of course, is gonna do that and you run a risk, which is why I have three spare, I'm um, two spares still in the uh, seed starting trays. So anyway, I come around here to the left. We're gonna do that one behind those sunflower, those artificial sunflowers up there, uh, the little welcome sign and pretty much the same thing. I had to be careful here because my irrigation line runs underneath here. Not that that's a quarter inch line, but there's another irrigation line underneath the ground. I'm pretty sure it's about 10 inches down. So I don't think I was gonna run into it, but uh, I, was, I was being very careful here. It's a Schedule 40 pipe, so it I wouldn't. Got, I'm not in danger of putting a hole in it. But uh, anyway, so yeah, this one here, I managed to get the ball out a lot better. And look at those roots. I mean, this thing is just ideal, perfect, little bit sticking out, ready to go. And uh, so, once I get done with uh, planting all these, we're going to put them in little sleeves, which is just uh, cutouts of a bucket. Uh, I'm, I'm in a pot. I, I was driving down the road and found a pile of these little pots that I uh, cut the bottoms out of them when I need them. I, I, there must have been like a hundred of them, but uh, use them as sleeves around these to protect them while they're getting established. And so there they are. Green Globe improved artichokes in their little sleeves. There's two more back there. And we're moving on to the sun chokes look at those things they are big they are tall some of them are actually broken off but they're still giving flowers in fact uh, this one had just had several flowers on it i've seen monarch butterflies on this thing and we will be harvesting the we will be harvesting the tubers can't believe that a uh, raindrop uh turned off my camera from above anyway yeah, so we'll be harvesting the tubers. Here's a little short of it, just a few tubers. We actually pulled up. In fact, I was hoping to pull up that one right there. That's a, that's a sun choke right there. And also called Jerusalem artichoke. But uh, I was going to pull up those roots, but I couldn't get it to come up easily. And it's raining, folks. It's really raining out here. <laughs> so sycamore tree, the American sycamore tree, that is not a sick tree. That is just the way the bark looks. It always peels. It always grows new bark. It does that all year long, but it is starting to lose its leaves. And you can see it's also thinned out. You can actually see through it quite a bit. The, uh, um, excuse me while I try to keep the rain off the lens here, the uh, crepe myrtles, the leaves on them are starting to change. There's no more flowers, but we do have lots and lots of berries on these, which are persistent, which means they will stay on here till the birds pick them off. Uh, you can see all the berries on there. The birds like those. They will eat those. The uh, doomed um, decorative pear tree is still here. And the uh, pine tree over here is still here. <clears throat> the, the pindo date palm. This is just the tree update, of course. Pindo date palm is still doing its thing. It's still producing... Uh, let me see if I can get past the raindrops on my screen here and zoom in. So you, oh, there's a squirrel up there. Yeah, the squirrels hang out in here a lot. He's looking at me, watching me. But there are, they, they like these dates and that's okay. Uh, they, they eat on them and leave them down here. In fact, uh, there are some good looking dates down here. Let me see if I can find, oh, here's one. Here's a really good looking one. That's what they look like with an insect. Squirrels eat those. They're, they're littered all over down this hill where they go. They, they go that way. They don't like coming this way because we have a mint plant over here. We'll get to that in a minute though. 
And from the trees, we moved into the front pollinator bed. This is a bed pretty much dedicated to flowers of some kind or another to help attract pollinators, pretty much. Um, so you can see there's still a few zinnias hiding down in here, and there's even some new ones that are still growing. Zinnias have been one of my favorite ones. I'm hoping to move into other flowers. There's actually some kind of lilies over there. Uh, this tree right here, this shrub, this bush, this uh, thing of deadly plants. Now, this is a um, angel trumpet. Brugmansia, I believe it's called. And it is toxic. But look at all the flowers that are coming. This thing is so beautiful. Now, this thing was, was budding two weeks ago. Full, uh, this many flowers. And then in about two weeks, all the old flowers fell off and it's come up with a whole new flush of new flowers. This thing is just beautiful, which is really the only reason I keep this here. So I'm gonna, ha I'm sure it's short lived, but it's fun while I have it. Down below here, <laughs> right underneath the toxic tree, we have our green onion hatch, Egyptian walking onion, and they're looking okay. And uh, yeah, so a lot of more trees growing up over there. I'm trying to keep the uh, rain from falling on my camera screen because when a big drop falls on it, it turns off the recording, which is kind of funny. <laughs> okay, a backside of the front pollinator bed just past the geese in that grow bag. That is a mint plant. And we come to the back pollinator bed. Now, the back pollinator bed is kind of in the same disrepair that the front pollinator bed is in. There's a lot of grass growing in there we need to get taken care of that's a that is a uh, amaryllis there's also another amaryllis just underneath the back of the of the um, bird bath over there which is in serious need of cleaning the, uh, the 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 tie plants of those red things they look beautiful that's my stool from uh, harvesting beans I don't know what it's doing over there but uh, anyway you can see up in there there's our lettuce patch that we eat from and it's been a pleasure to have finally have a regular supply of lettuce. But and, oh, look, there's some more zinnias in the front here. Nice, nice uh, little collection of zinnia right there. Those are nice. Okay, from the back pollinator bed, we turn to the tier gardens. Five tier gardens and uh, five tiered beds, and three of them have not been built yet, which is the case for this whole year so far. But uh, this top two is where we have this arch trellis and we have beans and there's actually still beans getting produced up in here look at there there's beans uh, not a lot i think we're gonna have enough i see i see about five or six more oh there's half a dozen more up there uh we're gonna have enough to can another round of beans I'm, i'd like to get over 30 cans of beans for the next year uh, we don't uh do beans a lot but we do love them so we want to have a supply of them just past the beans on these arch trellis, we have eight Roma tomato plants. Now folks, these Roma tomato plants here were planted in seed starting cups way back in the beginning in spring. And then they sat in solo cups here behind the grape orchard, the grape vines, which you'll see here in a minute. They sat there for several months. And then I planted these out after the sugar snow peas, sugar snap peas, sugar snow peas, that we had here uh, died out, which they die out in, you know, early summer because it gets hot and they don't like the heat. But I just wanna show you, these are not new tomato plants and look how many tomatoes there are. I mean, there's tomato, tomato, tomato. These are Roma tomatoes. And I'm, re I'm really excited because uh, we're going to have, uh, Tomatoes for preserving. Even, I mean, if you've seen this, this is really looking good. Look, even the back ones here are starting to get tomatoes on these back ones. There's two right there. And they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. They're growing and growing. And it is raining. There's that same mint plant that keeps the squirrels at bay over here a little bit. And we come back to the ugliest tree on the property. This is pink grapefruit tree that got frozen 
I'm trying to nurse it back to health. The white paint uh, keeps the chunk from getting uh, sunburned. Hopefully helps it. Uh, we're, we're hoping. I am very sad about what I've done to this. So, the grapes, and yes, it is still raining out here. It is, it is a couple of hours later. These grapes are looking amazing. In fact, let's go inside there and harvest some. So, yes, <laughs> the rain, a raindrop fell on the button on the screen again. I didn't know a raindrop would do that. But uh, anyway, yes, I've taken shelter inside the grapes. And interestingly enough, I think we're getting ready to harvest some of these grapes. They're, they're nice and soft. Not, they feel like they're ready. A uh, little bunch there, a little bunch there. A couple more bunches there. There's another bunch somewhere over. Oh, yeah, here it is. Oh, another bunch right there behind that leaf. Um, I actually cut down one that was up here. Nope. What is this? I think a bird got a hold of it. I did cut down one. Um, interesting, a bird got a hold of that and pulled it up through there. That's interesting, I'd not, I had not noticed that. But what I want you to notice though is on this right side, so over here on the left side, everything's good and green. Starts getting yellow leaves there. And as I get here down to the base of all the grapevines, all the leaves are starting to turn yellow. Or not all the leaves, but a lot of these leaves are starting to turn yellow. And uh, I've been doing my research. I'm a little excited because I'm getting ready to have to prune my grapes for the very first time. This is one year old grapes now. And uh, we're gonna have to, we're going to be uh, pruning these. I will of course do that on video. Uh, I would also like to extend this, double the length of this. This is uh, two, you can see here, these are uh, uh, cattle panels, uh, 16 foot cattle panels that are 50 inches wide and uh, um, 16 feet long. And I wanna put two more back here so that we can uh, let these things grow more. In fact, and you'll see, I mean, these vines are actually looking really good, really healthy. And they're kind of crisscrossing through here. I need to get some of these retrained over the new section. But look how, I mean, look how big these things are getting. I love it. This is just exciting. These are monster. This is not even the biggest one. The biggest one is up here. Uh, I can barely get to. Uh, you can see down there, the base of this grapevine. Eventually, I have a feeling this thing is going to grow to a point where it's going to pull apart this uh, cattle panel. Will it do that? I don't know. But I have my harvest bucket here and I'm going to uh, cut down, what, five bunches of grapes, six, seven bunches of grapes and see what we got. So there we go. Six ounces of Scuppernong grapes from our own grapevines for the very first time ever. Very excited. That's about 172 grams. So coming out of the back end of the grape arbor, which yes, I know this is not the best way to do grapes. Uh, we have our seedlings out here that we planted last spring. Yes, this is November. Some of these were planted in like April, May, something like that. Uh, still got lots of hot peppers in here growing. I'm not really gonna harvest anything out of here. Still got rosemary plants out here. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, I never did rescue this one, did I? But it's still there. I better try to rescue that. Uh, and that's the rest of the seedlings. Notice all the grapes though are growing into this stuff here. So it really needs more space to grow. We did try those grapes and uh, these are Scuppernong grapes. If, that, if uh, what I'm hearing is correct from the fellow who gave me these um, pups and uh, yeah, Scuppernong grapes, a little bit different taste, kind of interesting. Okay, so carrots. Remember we planted carrots in these four grow bags. <laughs> Look at these things go. Now they are sown way too thick. Between you and me, yes, I know that. And that's okay. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be waiting until these start to develop a little bit of a carrot. Now, I'm gonna pull one up here and you'll see it's just 
a root. So here pretty soon, this is gonna start developing little baby carrots here. Now this is all edible. Every bit of this is edible. But uh, this is gonna develop little baby carrots and we're gonna start eating baby carrots. And I'll be picking out uh, Mrs. Bowtie some lunch carrots and I'll actually be able to feast on some of these myself. Uh, we do like carrots and, and we'll be careful to pick out in between and leave selected carrots that will grow bigger. So yeah, carrots are looking good. Uh, look at that citronella. Oh my goodness, that thing is growing so big. Um, not sure what's in that grow bag. I think I've said this before, haven't I? I think every time I have to look in here, see what it was. Oh, it was potatoes. And that is not a potato, I don't think. No, that is some kind of a weed. Uh, those potatoes never grew. Uh, yeah, it just didn't go well. So there's some, what I'm calling mountain mint. There's a um, poinsettia from last year that doesn't have enough soil to grow in. So it's really kind of suffering. Um, wandering Jew, something else back there. There's a poinsettia with more uh, um, soil to grow. All kinds of grass growing through here. Tons of, uh, uh, of uh, pomegranate trees growing though. I see a enormous orange bell pepper back there. I forgot about that. I saw that the other day. There's another one right there. I wonder how this is doing. Oh, it looks beautiful. I'm gonna leave it and pick that later. Mrs. Bowtie will enjoy that. Uh, here's some uh, scotch bonnet peppers and next to some fatale peppers. No, that's a scotch bonnet also. There's uh, some jalapeno in there. More citronella. There's another scotch bonnet down in there. Dead fatale up there. Uh, the uh, citrus trees, of course, the old citrus trees are just dead, dead, dead. They are gonna have to be pulled out. Last but not least, of course, is the uh, blueberry patch. Big old area of blueberries, whole bunch of plants in here. Uh, we got all the vines pulled off last month. I'm very excited about that. You'll notice if, if you, you, you see a whole lot of new leaves down here for mulching. And I have, I think I, I've done all that over there. I've done this over here. I think I have a little bit in the back left to do. And uh, that will be three mowings worth of leaves that I've got this whole area mulched. And it's pretty deeply mulched. It's, it's several inches thick. That'll help bring this thing into next spring when it will start producing, hopefully, a lot of blueberries this year. We'd like to get a nice harvest out of this this year. So there you go. Another front and side garden tour, month of November 2023 in the books. I cannot believe this year. It is just crazy, crazy. But uh, we will um, be continuing on with the, uh, with the outer beds back there. And then of course, we're going to continue with the raised beds. And, uh, from the little seedlings that are down here, I just picked, uh, this jalapeno early that's been taunting me. You know, we saw this last month in the garden tour. All right, here goes. So what happens with these jalapenos, I've noticed, as they start growing in the cooler weather, they don't get the heat that they normally would. They kind of need the heat outside, you know, the temperature to develop capsaicin. Now, I haven't bitten into any seeds yet, so I may have just made a liar out of myself. Hmm. There is very little heat in that. That's a jalapeno early. It tastes good. It really does taste good. But, uh, yeah, very little heat in there. Good flavor, though. Nice. Okay, anyway. So, yeah, that's the garden tour. <laughs> and the technical difficulties. Oh, my goodness. Uh, those technical difficulties, every one of them had to do with the water and the rain. And I promise I will... I will not ever knowingly uh, record in the rain again. So, um, 
first few times a raindrop fell on the button on my screen of my phone and stopped the recording. I've never, I didn't know water would do that. That was so funny. And then uh, that last one there, as we were approaching the grapes, there was water on the screen and I couldn't stop the recording. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, uh, this has been a, a fun mess to, to do. Um, I've, it's taken a whole lot longer than they normally take because of that. So it's, uh, what is it, like three or four o'clock in the afternoon now? And uh, we're, uh, we're winding this down. So, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining along. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Those of you who have subscribed, you are my heroes. And I so appreciate the subscriptions, uh, and your vote of confidence, I guess, that, that you're, you're willing to follow along and, uh, join me on future, uh, videos. Uh, those of you who have not subscribed, please do. Uh, we are at a point where we're trying to grow our channel to the next level, and we need those subscriptions. And uh, we we really need to know that uh, what we're doing is something worth putting out there. So um, anyway, uh, if you thought this was uh, entertaining, informational, educational, or maybe even inspirational, click that thumbs up and uh, share this video on your social media with your friends who might like to maybe be inspired to do something in their garden. They don't have to do as much as I do. Um, that uh, I did a little tease in there. I hadn't done any teases in any of the video tours on the Small Space Gardening series, but uh, go check out the Small Space Gardening series if you haven't already. Um, you know, I started on a porch on a apartment and it wasn't much. Uh, that we had and uh, kind of grew and grew and grew until we finally found this house. Uh, two years I, I gardened on that porch on that in that uh, apartment and it's very simple and it's just a matter of doing it and just saying I'm gonna do it. So um, yeah I think that's it. I really appreciate y'all watching along and, and following along in the garden and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Y'all have a blessed day.